how's it going? Uh, Junior, how are you, mate? You okay? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Mm. Last uh, Saturday, we caught up with fellow countryman um, Joseph Parker, and we were talking about the fight, and he said that it's sort of, <laughs> is almost made, but there's a few little stumbling blocks. Is, is that, is that is, was he correct in saying that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, I think most of the big points of the contract have been sorted. It's just all the smaller, smaller minor details, which we really want to get smoothed up before the fight is confirmed. Um, yeah, so it's just a few small things. So I think it'll get uh, sorted out fairly soon. And then I would say hopefully a fight is announced uh, in a couple of weeks. Oh, awesome. And Dave Higgins came up and said something about gloves. Uh, is it, was there an issue with gloves? Apparently, uh, he said something about both fighters needed to have the same gloves. Is that right? Am I right in saying that? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So for our team, we just want to make sure that there's no room for any tampering or any type of foul play. So, well, yeah. So what we want is just basically us having on the same gloves. So that eliminates any type of, you know, uh, uh, conspiracy sort of thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, so we just want to make it an even playing field or like as close as we can. And then so it, so at the end of the day, it's just me versus Joseph Parker. <clears throat> Wicked, mate. Um, uh, speaking of Joseph Parker, have you, I mean, have you got a lot of respect for Joseph? I think he, I'm right in saying he's the first heavyweight world champion from New Zealand. Is is there a respect there between you two guys or is there maybe a bit of maybe a bit of needle? Um no no for sure. I mean like you know there is definitely a huge respect for him and his team. You know, they have uh they have produced the world champion, Joseph Parker. They have uh caused the boxing world to to like to like actually look towards our yeah. Side of the world, which is great for all of us. Um, yeah, so I've got a huge respect for them. I got a huge respect for Joseph Parker as well, and uh, yeah, which is actually why I can't wait for this fight because um, because with this fight brings on a lot of eyes and a lot of uh, possibilities if I come through this fight on a better um, end. So yeah. Oh, wicked mate. Um... <clears throat> Do you feel do you feel you've got maybe a psychological edge um, over Joseph uh, Junior because uh, you've beat him obviously twice in the amateurs and I think you beat him last the last time you fought is that is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so I beat him the first time we fought and then the last time we fought. So uh, yeah, so that's just yeah, I think that's just up to Joseph Parker if that if that's still lingering in his head. Um, yeah, then of course I'm going to come into the uh, and and to the spike better mentally, but I think I think that was a long time ago. I can't take in too much from those fights because you yeah. know they were so long ago. Things have changed. Uh, those were, I think I think I think the last time we fought it was I think it was twenty twelve, mate. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve. Shots was that three rounds? I can't I, I can't remember because the amateurs have like changed like so much because they went from four two minute rounds and then three three minute rounds. I can't remember which one it was, but uh, yeah, but yeah, but like you know, by the time we fight, it's gonna be like twelve rounds, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, um, yeah. So like you know, I just I just can't wait, man. <laughs> um, he's. He, when we spoke, he said he's going to come out and he's going to become more of an aggressive fighter and less sort of cautious. Does that play into your hands a bit more, do you think? Or or maybe not? Uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, they've been, there's been a lot of times where Joseph Parker has, have, have, has said a lot of things before the fight and he always promises this and that, but you never know what you're going to end up in the ring, you know, when you... Um, uh, when it actually comes to fight day, so yes, yeah so, yeah. so in terms of like promising what you're gonna bring to the table, I don't really pay too much attention to that. He'll say this and that, but it, but like at the end of the day, like you know, I think a boxer is just, I think a boxer's job is just to expect anything. So yeah, yeah so yeah, so so despite what he says, I don't really expect 
anything major from him, you know, I'm just going to quickly adapt to what I have on the day. How, how big a fight do you think is going to be, obviously, two New Zealanders meeting in New Zealand? Surely it's got to be, it's got to be fans that have to come to that. Do you think there will be fans present, Jimmy? Um, yeah, there is most definitely going to be a big crowd. Um, oh, well, like, in, in terms of this pandemic, hopefully there is actually a crowd. Um, so, yeah, so if we are allowed a crowd, then I am definitely hoping for a huge sellout stadium um, for, for the likes of me and Joseph Parker, because I think this is probably like the biggest fight that we've had here in a long time. Um, I think the last time we, we've had a huge domestic fight was a few years ago, and it was between Shane Cameron and David Tour. And both of them were kind of at the, uh, I mean, uh, David Tua was kind of coming back into his career. Yeah. Um, whereas, whereas for this fight, we have two young. At the pinnacle, uh, really. Possibly, uh, like uh, looking at boxes going for it. So, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, I'm expecting a big fight and I'm expecting New Zealand to see it as a big fight uh, as well. Beating Joseph Parker, now that you're looking past it, obviously. Um, it put you right in the mix of the division, really, with the WBO. When you think about, you know, Derek Chisora versus Alexander Usyk, you sort of be in line next to fight the winner of that. Um, is that a fight that excites you? And is there, I, who would you prefer to fight to maybe out with them too, if you could pick? Uh, well, I fought, uh, I fought Usyk back in the amateur days. So for sure, I would love the rematch. I mean, like, you know, he took me to school <laughs> back then. So for sure, I would love the rematch. But then, uh, but then a fight with Derek Chisora also brings a lot of excitement because of what he is. You know, yeah, he's a great fighter. He's a come forward fighter. People always love his fight. So like, you know, of course, I want to face uh, face um, him as well. <clears throat> I mean, that potentially could be in the UK. Obviously, Derek is a massive UK following. Um, thoughts on coming to the UK to fight uh, Junior? Would you would be up for that. You guys have such a big <laughs> pool of talent there with like, with like uh, big boys and just massive fans but uh, be um, high your fighters. It'll be a pleasure if I could fight there. So like, you know, if I got the call, hey man, I'm definitely coming. <laughs> oh, wicked. Um, I want to ask you about uh, Deontay Wilder. Obviously you've sparred, um, I assume, many around with him. Has is, is that been great... A uh, great experience for you and a great preparation for the for the big fights ahead. Yeah, definitely. Like you know, it brings uh, it brings a bit of ease towards my mental state when I go towards big fights. You know, because I have um, because I because I have the sparring sessions with him at the back of my mind. You know, if I can handle myself uh, well uh, uh, against the former WBC champion. Then I shouldn't have too much to uh, to basically worry about with the rest of the fighters. So, like you know, that is something that I keep in my back pocket always. Awesome, mate. A, a lot of people um, say Deontay Wilder is a bit of a one-trick pony. That technically he's not a fantastic boxer. Would you sort of agree with that, or from seeing what you've from saw with him when you have uh, boxed him, is he is he better than what people think? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I can see what people, uh, I can see why people say that. But uh, but after being in the ring with him, there are small things that he definitely does right that, uh, that is very easy to not see when mm. you're fighting. So, um, yeah, yeah, man. So what, so what he does, he does very well. He doesn't try to do, like, like the stuff that normal boxers do. Like, you know, he's not... He's not too mobile. Um, he's not the prettiest boxer to watch, but the small things that he does with his range and his uh, leverage, he does very well. And I think people overlook that too much. But like you know, at the end of the day, he's got that punch, man, and that punch is wicked. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I think uh, I think Lewis Ortiz would uh, would agree with you there, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Um, he's obviously had um, 
some work done on his bicep. There was a lot of talk about him being injured uh, prior to obviously Fury too. But what was what was the camp like leading up there? Was he was he maybe injured going to the fight? Would you say, or is that maybe the press trying to hype things up a bit? No, nah, um, he definitely was injured. Um, but like I said before, I don't know the extent of it. So I definitely know he was injured. How bad it was, I don't know. Um, was that the reason he lost the fight? I don't think so, you know. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so he did. He definitely did hurt himself leading up towards the fight. It was very close to the fight too. Um, maybe that played on his head during the fight, but I think with the game plan that uh, Tyson Fury came in, um, the fight, man, man, like, you know, it would have been hard to beat him, um, even if Wilder was 100%, you know, it would have been a very hard night, so, yeah, man, so, uh, yeah, Fury, Fury definitely came to win and to hurt, so, yeah, man, that was a wicked fight. <laughs> um. With obviously boxers get injured in camps, like you've said, if the same sort of happened to you, do you think you maybe you'd pull out knowing it was such a massive fight, or do you think sometimes you've got to just because the fight is so big, you have to just go out of the fight, even with a little niggly injury, anyway? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I think even uh, like in past fights, I think in every fight, you never go into the fight 100%. So, like, you know, there was always small, like, you know, niggles and pains and, uh, you know, stuff, um, stuff like, you know, going on in the background. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, so, like, you know, so there's always small stuff that you have to deal with leading up to a fight. But then again, if you're fighting for, for, for like, a lot of money, there's, like, no way that you're going to pull out of the fight. So, like, you know, I think you just got to do what you got to do. And just, you know, put those things at the back of your head. Try and get it outside of your head if you can. And then just deal with the job at hand. Oh, my goodness. Um, mm. You've boxed in the in the US. Um, do you think that fight is maybe from New Zealand, from countries that maybe boxing isn't the number one sport? Do you think in order to become maybe potentially a world champion or to become as good as you can be, you've got to go abroad to the US and to the UK and to these places like you've done? Do you think that... Maybe boxers coming through have to have to do that as well. Um, I don't think you have to, uh, because I think Joseph Parker and his team definitely showed that you don't have to do that. Um, but with that comes a lot of money. So, like, if you're prepared to stay in like a place like I don't know New Zealand or like Australia, you are gonna have to be prepared to fly guys over towards you, which will which will cost your team a lot of money as well. So um, I think it's I think it's easier for the Kiwis and for the Aussies to basically go to to like another country where the boxing and and the sport is bigger. I think that's the easier path, but the harder path is is to stay at home. So um, so both is possible, but I think it's easier just to shift abroad. Definitely, mate. I suppose you're quite lucky. Obviously, there's um, Joseph Parker there in the, in the in New Zealand for you to fight in your division. I spoke to Michael Zarafa yesterday in Australia, and obviously Tim Dezu is coming through. So that's a great domestic fight. Um, do you, how do you how do you see maybe uh, Tim and Michael going at it? Do you think that's a, a 50-50 fight, or maybe do you think Tim Dezu is maybe the better the better guy at the moment? <laughs> Not to put you on the spot of anything, mate. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, Shucks, I like Tim Zoo, man. I like what I see. Eh? I like what I see. Um, yeah, but it, I don't know, man. It's hard to say because I know Zarafa has been like around for a while and he's bloody very good as well. But Tim, man, I don't know. I don't know because he surprised in that last fight, you know. I didn't yeah, think definitely. he was going to move on. Look so... Uh, oh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, like you know, Tim. Yeah, Tim. Tim. Tim very well could, could uh, very well could win this fight. But I think going in, it, yeah, I think it is fifty-fifty going in. Oh, yeah. thank you, mate. Uh, before I before I let you go, now, mate. Uh, back 
but uh, maybe going to bed or to look after the children. I know you've got to go one last question. Um, who do you think is the man of the he of the heavyweight division? You, you maybe AJ or you Fury or do you think maybe Wilder or with or Quebec in now with the snorkel? How how do you see it at the moment? Uh, I mean, it's. Um... I mean, the first name that comes to mind is Tyson Fury, but it's kind of hard not to say it's Anthony Joshua because of what he's done. I think I think of Tyson Fury first because it seems like AJ hasn't fought in a while, so yeah. like you know he, he's not really fresh on my mind. But uh, but the stuff that he's done is um, huge. So I think I think the man of the division right now. <sighs> Yeah, I think it is Tyson Fury because he's uh, because he's got that momentum behind him right now. So, yeah, Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury first and AJ second, do you think? Yeah, 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 pretty much, yeah. yeah. Uh, how, uh, if, I ask, if, if I had to ask you for a prediction, if they did finally meet that, we obviously we're all hoping for, how do you think that fight's going to play out, mate? It's going to be a good fight, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it fight certainly is. Good fight, man. That fight's going to be a good fight. I would definitely lean towards Tyson Fury, but AJ, man, he um he really surprised me on how on how fast he switched his styles on the rematch with Ruiz. You know, when he went from like a like a forward counter puncher towards boxing sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, yeah. So from the speed that he could quickly adapt styles man that was amazing to me so like you know I think um yeah I think I think a fighter like that is going to be hard to fight against so yeah and I just can't wait for that fight for sure <laughs> yeah I think um I think everybody's got their fingers crossed that uh Eddie here and Frank Warren and Bob Arum and MTK can get that sorted hopefully hopefully man <laughs> oh, wicked. Well, Junior, I wish you all the best for the uh, fight with Joseph Parker. Hopefully it gets made soon. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to catch up. Thanks, mate, for your time. No problem, man. Thank you so much. Cheers, buddy. Take care. All right, man.